Hello everybody, it's me Sam here from Wheel Gaming and today I'm going to be showing you how to use and install the Autosave World plugin for Bucket by Chev Chicken, Therai and Hockey Mikey. So as the name suggests, this is a very simple Autosave World plugin and what it will do is it will back up and save uh, your world or worlds and uh, has a nice little features automatically as well as manually. Um, so I will go over the config at the end of this tutorial and to show you how to do it automatically. But I'm just going to go over all the commands so to show you how to do it manually, and then you have an idea of what the automatic um, uh, stuff does. So the main command for this plugin is ASW, and uh, if I do ASW help, it'll tell me a list of all commands. As you can see here, there's uh, quite a few. So the first one we want is ASW save. And what it will do is very simply uh, save the world currently to the world's uh, file in, or the world's directory in your root Minecraft thing. So this world's called world, it will save it into the world's directory. It's just the same as uh, save all as you would a normal uh, Minecraft uh, and whatnot. So that's no new new thing really. I'm just going over everything. And that just performs the save. Uh, the next one is ASW backup. And this is a different one. And what this will do is will back up your world. So it is currently placing um, this world I'm in, or the worlds, or wherever I configured it. Uh, and it's pushing it as a backing it up into its plugins directory. And I will show you where that is. Uh, when I go over the settings part and how to install it. Another alias for that is just simply backup. So that's quite handy um, if you just want to quickly back up your world and you know, maybe we've seen some lag or something you just type that in quickly or possibly something like that. And what you can actually do with this plugin which I will show you in a bit is actually back it up to an FTP server so instead of all having all your uh, backup file files in your Minecraft server, which might get fill up quite quickly, especially if you have it backed up very often. And if you have a large server somewhere which you can access via FTP, then uh, you can uh, FTP the files there. Okay, next one is ASW Purge. And what this will do, uh, at the moment, doesn't do anything on this one, but if you have plugins such as WorldGuard, uh, LWC, Multiverse Inventory, Plot Me, resonance and all sorts of things it will pur or try to purge some of these plugins so they have uh, data associated with them uh, things like regions for world guard if the players aren't in, uh, active for a while or they haven't been on in so many times then it will just remove their entries from the, the database of regions just remove that region and uh, LWC and a similar thing uh, where if the player is inactive then it will remove their chests box and stuff and that's how that will work. And you can configure uh, what plugins it purges in the config, as I will show you. And the alias for that is just purge. And next one is ASW restart, which I'm not going to uh, show you, mainly because it will uh, mess up the video a bit. But basically, that will do a restart. So you can restart your server uh, using this plugin, which is very handy. If you're feeling it's got a lot of lag or you need to uh, install a plugin or something, then you can do it via this and just type an ASW restart once, uh, provided it's configured correctly. Uh, uh, some more commands ASW reload, so if you've made configuration uh, changes, then that will reload the configuration file. ASW reload config will do. Um, the single config uh, file, there's two files, the config file and the message one that will reload just the config and reload message will reload just the message and reload uh, will do both of them uh, well that's that, I don't know why, you just do both of them, I guess that's much easier uh, AS3 version will tell you what version you're running, so at the moment I'm running uh, 4.9 um, it is quite nice because it should work 
on uh, all the backup builds on 1.2.5, perhaps the current build, um, and it really is quite a simple. Well, the thing it relies on shouldn't change, provided the API of backup doesn't change drastically. So it should, it won't break basically when uh, backup updates, which is very nice. And finally, we have ASW info, which just shows you some information about the uh, status of the thing. So it tells you my auto save is active. So it will auto save every so often. I'll show you. The last save time was the date and the time. So at the moment it was uh, two minutes to 10. And then all, any auto backup is inactive because I have uh, disabled it for now. So that is the uh, plugin command side of it. I'm going to switch over now to show you how to install it and go over configuration to actually have it automatically. So see you then. All right, hello everybody, welcome back. I'm now just going to quickly go over how to install and the configuration of auto save world. So link as always will be in the description. Download here, drag and drop into your plugin directory. I'm sure you're aware of how to do that. And we want to open up our folder and put it in our plugin directory. And when we start up the server, we should see a few things have been created. So we are looking at the config, config, console. We should see auto save world loading, auto save world, and then uh, we should say it's enabled or whatnot, which all looks fine. Enabling auto save world, there we go. And stop the server. And now let's have a look at what it's created and the config styles files. Okay, so the first thing it creates the auto save world plugin directory and in it will be two configs, config.yml and config message.yml. Um, so these will be the configs as I discussed in the video. Config.yml is the main one and config message is just your language file. Um, I won't go over that, that's just simply changing it to your language. Uh, but just before I go onto the config, I will show you where the backups are. You go to backup to your root where your uh, jar is. There should be a new folder called backups. This is once you've done an actual backup. Um, and there'll be the backups.yml, which will show you the number of backups of each world and uh, stuff like that. But you shouldn't be able to edit that. And then you have the worlds here as well. So we have a backup of the world, world nether, world end. And, uh, the date here and the time of each backup so you can easily see which one's which and have them ordered uh, by time and stuff. And you can see here is our world backed up. Now there's a very small world to it, it didn't take very long to back up. Obviously if you have a larger world it's going to take longer. So that's where they are. Um, but now I'm just going to quickly go over the config dial well by mill just to go over it basically. Okay so var debug false and true uh, if you want to be in debug mode you can set true or false uh, so save now this is where it just saves the world as it would save all um, just to basically just make sure the world saves to the file uh, you can set the true or false uh, the interval is in I believe uh, seconds so every uh, few uh, well, 900 divided by 60 you should be able to know that, but that's what, 10, about 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, it will save the world and broadcast that it has saved the world. Um, so that's the same as ASW save command. Then we have the backup. This is the ASW backup command. So this is slightly longer, so I should just go over this. Okay, so the interval, again, this is number of seconds uh, a backup is. So if you were to divide that by 60, you find out how many minutes it is. Uh, save before, so whether or not you want to save beforehand or not. Uh, this will just run the save world thing. I recommend that's keeping that as true. Broadcast, so it will tell the server that it is backing up. And then we have two bits, local files and FTP. So we can choose to back up uh, the worlds either um, locally by FTP or both or neither. So this will enable the local file system. So that will be true and it will save them to now into our root directory. 
uh, the well. So this is the list of all the wells we want to back up. A star means a couple of wells. If we just want to know it back up our main well, we just type the world there. If we wanted uh, more wells, we could have world nether here as well. And that would just back up world nether and world and we'll back up world end and stuff. Uh, max number of world backup, so 15. So this is obviously the maximum number of uh, things. Uh, if it reaches this limit or goes over it, then it will delete the oldest one and then create create a new one. Uh, plug in folder as well. So you can actually, as well as backing up the worlds, which is the nice thing about this plugin, you can actually back up the plugins folder as well. Uh, so that, that's a true to do that. And the max number of plugin backups, again, like the world, um, you have a directory of all the plugins with the date and it will tell you uh, if you've gone over 15 of them then it will delete the oldest one and exclude folders so if there's any folders uh, in the backup that you don't want uh, to be backed up in the plugins for instance then you can exclude certain plugins maybe ones that uh, don't have anything that will change they're all the same uh, two ext folders so this backups to ext folders and whatnot. Um, disable int folder as well. So this just disables the backup to the internal folder. So this will only work if you have this enabled. So two external folder. So so two external folders. Let's go over this quickly. Two external folders. So you can actually go to a, another folder other as opposed to your uh, root directory and if you want to do that then you can actually disable uh, in your root directory here as well so, that's the vault. so you can have it saved somewhere else, it doesn't have to be a root directory and if you did want it saved somewhere else then you can put it in here as a path uh, to where the external folders are and it must be the absolute path okay so an absolute path for instance, um, would be say uh, on a Windows machine uh, D. Then, for instance, uh, I don't know, back up folder or something like that. It has to be the absolute path. So from the, the D drive or C drive or whatever drive you got, or you got Linux, so you can have home, server, or, and wherever you like. Uh, but that will be the external folders. And then zip. Finally, um, you can actually have it backed up as a zip. And FTP is very similar, and there's a few th different things. So enable true or false, so you want to enable it, so you can set true. And then you have your FTP details, so hosting, port, login, and password. You should be given these by your FTP provider or FTP server. The path uh, where you want the server to be back, back, back up to store, so ASW. You can change that on the source. Uh, on worlds, again, like the worlds up here, you can change which worlds are backed up. And the plugin folders, whether or not they're backed up as well, and uh, whether or not you want to exclude folders just as before the local files, and you can also save them as well, um, as well, which is good. Okay, so that's the backup bit. So as you can see, you can back up locally as well as uh, to an FTP server, which is uh, very nice. Now we have purge. So this is where we'll purge uh, certain things uh, from plugins, WorldGuard, OOC. Multiverse inventories, uh, plot me, residence, and any player DAP files as well. And as I said before, it will purge all the files that it doesn't need anymore, any inactive players, any inactive plots, any inactive inventories, that sort of thing. Um, then it will purge. So the interval, so how long this is run every now and again. And second, a wait time. So this is how long the player is offline for. So it's been offline for quite a while, then it will person. Uh, broadcast again, true or false. And then you've got all the separate configs for each uh, plugin. So well guard you can disable enable it depending on whether or not uh, you want to purge that one automatically or not. And we don't want to do the region or the overlapping region and uh, not and each one has its own sort of purge thing. And that's not too bad. Uh, crash restart. So if the server does crash, um, then it will attempt to try and restart it. So we can set that to true or false. 
uh, the script path is where your the path to the, the startup script of your server. Um, so the shell script that starts your server here. Uh, if it can't find it, then it will try to do it anyway. Uh, timeout in uh, seconds. Uh, so if it won't tick, then basically, if your server is not ticking for 60 seconds, then it will say, oh look, the server's crashed, basically. And then it will run the, the restart script. Or we, instead of restarting, you can just stop it. That's why I said that's true. And then we have auto restart as well. So this is like crash restart, I said it will do it automatically every so often. So enable to get the true or false, and then you're going to broadcast it or not. The countdown is uh, what it broadcasts to the server. So 60 every, will tell you, will give you a warning every, with 60 seconds remaining, 30 seconds, and then 10 to 1. The startup script, as before, the crash restart or script. Or you can just stop every so often and just manually restart it. Uh, the time here though, I will just go with this. You can input the times you want for the service result. So maybe so the players aren't really on at 5 in the morning. Then I can just input here 5 o'clock. And it will restart at 5 o'clock. This will be based on your server time, of course. Or I can restart it every hour if I wanted to and just type in 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Nine o'clock and so forth, uh, but you can input which times the server restarts. Uh, console command, so you can actually run console commands automatically, automatically, uh, every so often. So we have time mode and interval mode. So uh, we'll just go over this quickly. So you can enable time mode. And this will do it at certain times in the day. So I'll give you an example of how to do it. So first of all, you need to define the time you actually want to uh, run these commands. So we'll say uh, a 7 p.m. So 7 o'clock. And then we want a colon of this. And then on the next bit, these are the commands we're going to run. And these are console commands, so obviously anything that can be run by the console. So, for instance, easy to say commands, so we say it is evening now. So that will run the command and say it is evening now. Uh, we can also reload stuff, like what world card reload. We can do PEX reloads, that sort of thing. So it will reload at 7 o'clock every time. Um, any command you like, so time, day, for instance, anything that can be run by your console, any plugin, you can do there. So that will run it at 7 o'clock every day. And we can also do interval times as well. And this works very similarly. But the only difference is um, you can run it every uh, 10 seconds or so. So every 10 seconds, we can run a command time day so it will ensure that it's always day it's uh, one way of doing it I guess uh, obviously you can probably won't have to make the interval that short we we'll make it every minute I guess and it will restart the day every minute so that's the interval and the difference between the time mode and the interval mode and finally we just have the world guard uh, bit so the world guard save world guard save factions and save GP, this is world regen. Uh, what you can actually do is regen the world, um, as I didn't actually go over in the thing, the uh, command bit. Um, you can re uh, regen the world as it was, but keep the world guard regions. You can keep the faction areas and the grief prevention uh, sort of things. And to do that, the command is ASW regen world, and then the world name, regen world being one bit and that will regen the world um, basically by keeping all the factions and stuff so what we'll do is we'll just kick everyone out save all the things restart the server, delete all the old chunks and then uh, put in the new world and then paste in all the uh, the thing it saved in before 
and then it will restart. And lastly, we just have locale. So if you want to change the language, you can change it there. And that is just a quick overview of the config. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to add. Um, so it's a very nifty plugin, uh, very popular, I believe. Uh, you can use it to automatically do everything for you. Uh, very useful for last servers, I guess, if you uh, are busy with your time and don't have time to uh, restart or back up your thing, and it will just do it automatically so you don't have to worry about it. So, very good plugin. I recommend checking it out. Um, so, that's the Zero tutorial. So, thanks for watching. This has been me, Sam from Group Gaming, signing out. So, if we give it a little nudge, that's how you set it off down the tracks. As you can see there, we've got our diagonal block, which is uh, rather funky. So you can, you can hide the minecart, you can even get rid of these tracks here, only needs to track that.